What's up, guys? Bobgar here. Uh, so I got a message last week from Zencyclopedia saying, Hey there, big fan of the $10 decks. Any chance you can make a $10 Delver deck sometime in the near future? Keep up the great work. Uh, so yeah, uh, I was excited to get a message from from somebody who liked the $10 deck thing I was doing, and I decided that I would go ahead and build a $10 Delver deck for them. I will show you what I came up with. It's definitely not typical, and I will explain the reasons why in the next slide. So I decided to go with a black-blue build of Delver. And so the reason I decided to go with a black-blue build of Delver is, is mostly because I think the optimal build of Delver is probably uh, blue-red. But the problem is none of the lands in blue-red are cheap enough to make it uh, reliable. Like, basically, we just can't afford to run the lands in it. Uh, so I tried a couple builds of it and wasn't super happy. I also tried some mono blue builds, which were, some of which were actually okay, but I think the best of which were actually felt much more like fairies decks than they did like Delver decks. Mostly because it, they ran a lot of fairies. Yeah, the thing that made them shine at the end was Scion of Una, which is obviously like a super fairy card. <laughs> it's a fairy tribal card, in fact. And it's like, well, at that point, I probably almost might as well take out the Delvers and just put in more fairies, and it'd probably be a better deck. So I felt bad running that deck for the week. Uh, and I, th I thought black would be an interesting thing to pair with Delver, just because black has a lot of very useful interaction at instant speed, and it has a lot of good threats that kind of fit in with the fact that you have a lot of these instant speed uh, threats to play. And so this is the deck I came up with. Uh, let's look through the creatures first. Obviously you'll have Delver of Secrets as your one drop. And then all the other creatures are black creatures. Their two drop is Packrat. Packrat is very powerful. If it goes unanswered, it can just take over games. Uh, sometimes you want to slam it turn two. Sometimes you want to wait till turn five if you're almost 100% sure they have removal up and you don't have any other threats in your hand. But you know, a lot of times they'll just slam it turn two and hope for the best. It's particularly nice too because you can create a copy of your rat end of turn, end of your opponent's turn, and that means you can keep up things like counter spells or kill spells during their turn. Uh, so yeah, I thought that would be pretty good. Desecration Demon, I was less sure about, but I've been playing it in my cube, and I, I like the card a lot. Uh, it's, it has the problem where there are certain decks that just beat it really hard. So for instance, if you run into black white tokens. They'll just sack a token all day. They don't. They don't care. It's just never going to get to untap. But a lot of decks have a little more trouble dealing with it. I mean, it does die to obviously Path to Exile and Sweepers and even a uh, Revolted uh, Fatal Push. So it, it is a little susceptible to that. But if, if they can't answer it, a lot of times it can help you squeeze out wins just because it's so big and it's flying. So it has a lot of. Uh, ability to get past people. And then finally, Grimag Angler, the classic 7-mana uh, 5-5 five five that has Delve, and basically we're going to be putting a lot of things in our graveyard. One, because we're cantripping them. Two, because we're discarding them to Pack Rat. And three, we're running Thought Scour, which you'll see in the next slide, which puts things in our graveyard. So in general, we're going to get a lot of stuff in our graveyard, and so we might as well use that as a resource for Delve and get uh, big, big Grimag threats out quicker than we should, which is similar to what Delver does where you know you get a three two flyer out quicker than you should. If we can get a five five ground creature out turn three, you know, into like a six six flyer turn four, things like that, you can you can take over games pretty quick and, and just temple your opponent out between counter spells and kill spells and getting out these big threats, especially things like Gurmag Ingo, which you can often play for like one or two mana in, in those turns. That's the creatures. And then we have a lot of cantropy draws. Peak is one of the less exciting ones in the deck. Uh, look at your opponent's hand. It can be nice to know if you can actually play a Desecration Demon safely, uh, since that one requires you to tap out, or you know whether you feel like you need to hold up counter spells or kill spells in various situations. So I like using that early uh, to, to kind of figure out what, what our opponent's doing and how we have to interact with it. Sleight of Hand is not nearly as good in the deck as Serum Visions is, but they both do vaguely the same thing. They give you a little bit of card selection. Serum Visions is nice because it has the Scry. It can set you up to flip Delver. We're only running two of that because it's expensive, and we're running three Sleight of Hands because Sleight of Hands is much cheaper. But in general, Serum Visions is much better just because it lets you flip Delver more reliably. Uh, Thought Scour is really good in the deck. It cantrips for one mana. It's an instance that will flip Delver, and it turns on our various... Uh, delve cards, which we have quite a few of, 
And then the final card in this slide is Think Twice. And I actually really like Think Twice in this. Actually, I think I'm running three, not two. I think that's a lie. Uh, it's two mana to draw a card and has flashback for three mana to draw another card. It works really well with Pack Rat, for instance. You can just discard it to Pack Rat uh, and then later on use its three mana to draw a card and then whatever card you drew, discard it to Pack Rat. So it gets, it's, you know, it's equivalent to two Pack Rats if you have enough mana. And yeah, it's just, I, I find it to be a pretty useful card because if you, you know, accidentally mill it with Thought Scour, things like that, like having it in your graveyard is not a bad thing. Uh, so that was it's kind of nice to have a little bit of flashback in the deck uh, and then our interaction spells so we're running a whole bunch of interaction of various sorts two spell pierce this is mostly early game keep your delver from getting bolted keep your uh you know pack rat from getting fatal pushed whatever uh mana leak same kind of thing sometimes you'll want to be countering stuff they're trying to do to slow you down sometimes you'll just want to be countering the threats they're putting into play one negate just because most decks are going to run something that can be negated in late game the mana leaks start to become pretty bad and then a little bit more interaction a logic knot a uh, logic knot is pretty good late game uh unlike mana leak and you, you have enough delve stuff that it's not too hard to use murderous cut is a delve uh creature kill that's unconditional and go for the throat is a very good two mana creature kill the only disadvantage is that you can't kill artifact creatures which there aren't a lot of but there are enough that it can be like it obviously you end up playing against affinity you got to sideboard it out uh, i can make our pre-board affinity matchup pretty bad if we happen to draw these but still a very good card and then our lands so for lands we're running four drowned catacombs uh 10 islands and six swamps we're running more islands than swamps because most of our cantrips are blue so a lot of times we'll want to end and so yeah our cantrips are blue and so is think twice and so we often want to have the blue at instant speed up to just draw some more cards at the end of the turn and things like that uh and yeah all of our draw smoothing effects are also blue so a lot of times we can use that blue mana to ensure that we hit our drowned catacombs and swamps to get our black it is a little awkward sometimes because sometimes we'll just end up with three blue and one black and we really want to hit that uh desecration demon but for the most part i mean obviously if you look here on average you're gonna if, if you pulled equally from all of the lands, you'd end up with two islands, a Drowned Catacombs, and a Swamp, basically. So usually you'll be able to play your Desecration Demon turn four if that's what you want to do. And then sideboard. Uh, I'm not convinced I built this sideboard very well. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would probably change it, but this is this is the way I built it. Tormod's Crypt is very good for removing opponent's graveyards. It's possible I should have put Bajuka Bog in instead. I actually had this in on the online slide originally, but... I realized that I played it with Tormod's Crypt, uh, the actual version I ran on Magic Online, so I put that back. Uh, Peak is just another copy of that in our hand, uh, in our sideboard. It's not super, I don't really know when that comes in, it's not super important. Spell Pierce does have a lot of instances where you'll want it to come in, same with the Vapor Snag. Uh, Devour Flesh is good in instances where your opponent's trying to cheat something in, like if they have a cheat in Emrakul thing, you can force them to sacrifice it at instant speed. Uh, some Doom Blades for more removal, uh, two Mana Leaks, again, more interaction, uh, two Negates. Negates are often really, really good. Uh, if you wanted a creatureless decks or decks where the creatures just don't matter that much to you, Negate is great. And then Consuming Vapors is a weird one. Uh, it's quite possible you'd be better off having uh, something else, but it's I like the card a lot. It's very interesting, and it does a good job of, like, clearing your opponent's board slowly while also gaining you back some life if uh, you end up behind in tempo. So that's that's the deck. I did not do a matchup rundown for this deck. I I feel like it has an okay matchup about against just about everybody because uh, it's a very fair deck in a lot of ways. I mean, not fair, fair, because it's running Delver, which you can flip quickly, and it's running Grimag Angler, which you can kind of cheat into play with Delve quickly. But fair in the sense that it's not trying to do anything super sneaky and tricky. It's mostly going to be like, I'm going to play my threats, you're going to play your threats, who has the removal for each other's threats, who can push through damage quickly enough. And you know, that's kind of how the games are going to go. So anyway, I'm going to jump into some games. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Bobgar here playing some $10 deck. We're doing some Black Blue Delver in Modern. Um, this hand does not have Delver, but it does have Pack Rat and some ways to get to my Black Mana, hopefully in Serum Visions. I think I'll keep this, although I'm a little skeptical. Hello, good luck. Oops. Mm. 
then a desecration demon. We're going to need a bunch of black for that. Hopefully we find at least a black source off this. It's what I really want. Uh, I think I bought them both, unfortunately. And the gate feels really good against him too, but we cannot afford to not get a black source next turn, I think. Um, I think control is probably one of our less good matchups, but I don't actually know. Presumably whatever I cast here, he will counter. Um, I'm going to slate of hand. See if he bites on the counter. I will take the black into hand. And I suppose I will pass. So the next turn, if I want to, I can start pack ratting. Okay, and I'm not super worried about my peak resolving, so I'm, or bot scour if I want to bot scour. I think I'll probably peak. I'll probably wait till his end of turn to do it. Oh, maybe it's a blink deck. Uh, cancel that. Peak here. He has a path, so maybe that's a good reason not to just slam my. Pack rat, although honestly it'll ramp me up to Desecration Demon, so I guess he has Path and Tension Sphere. Alright. Um, he has the Stonehorn Dignitary. He's probably going for the Stonehorn Lock eventually. Got another. Got another. Lamb just in grief. <clears throat> I think I do play out Pack Rat here. I think if he wants to Path Pack Rat, that's fine with me. Um, we'll see if that's what he wants to do. Uh, I can probably also... I can Angler or Desecration Demon next turn, probably. You can also Detention Sphere. He has another Bleed Splicer. Okay, that's fine. Nothing too scary so far. I mean, he could path in addition to doing that, which he might. He does. Sure. Yeah, I'll look for black mana. Seems good. Pass the turn. He swings in every four. Um, then my question is, do I want to keep mana leak up, or do I just want to slam Desecration Demon? Oh, and I even got a Drowned Catacombs. Nice. One, two, three, this is seven, five, six, seven. I thought scour myself. Another drowned catacombs, I discarded an angler and an island. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think. I think I slam Angler here. Um, and I guess I'll do another blue. Alright. Then I can decide whether I want a mana leak or not. Okay, sure. Plays. All right. Think twice. Um. Hmm. Well, I have a lot of mana now. Partly a matter of so I can put desecration demon down. I'm presuming. If I do next turn, he could.
attention sphere it, which would be a little scary, because that, then it would be outside of uh, Minolik range. So maybe it's better to wait until I can have that and logic not up and defend it, but that's a ways away. Um, I don't think it makes sense to swing here. It's just a matter of whether I play Desecration Demon or not. Um, I mean, otherwise I can just hold up counter and think twice. Actually, I think I'm just going to pass here. Okay, the spell seems good. Into play taps, so he still does not have enough to get by uh, two spells. One, two, three, think twice. Another land. Oof, I am super heavy on lands, but that's alright. Um, land for turn. Uh, I can put out Desecration Demon. And I guess that's what I'll do. Play Desecration Demon. Play Delver of Secrets. Pass turn. Could start attacking here, it wouldn't feel bad. I have two things back to block, but I'm lower on life than him. Oh, he could just double block it, never mind. But he can't double block the flying one, so that'll be good. He'd double block with his first strike, it would be pretty good. I'm gonna put in a 1 1 flyer or something. Oh, uh, oh, had I yield? Oh, I auto yielded. Well, that was silly of me. Eh, well, that's still fine. I guess I should have uh, should have mana leaked that because I'm not gonna be able to mana leak whatever it is here probably. Okay. So yeah, you can detention spear one of my guys. I'll probably do it on desecration demon. And I could do either of these, but they won't get it, so it's not worth it. Sure. Seems fine. Well, I misplayed by not countering the angel for sure, but I don't think it would have mattered very much here. Sure, you can get in with that. Well, now I'm probably going to lose. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I guess... No, wow. I'm getting super flooded. This is not a land-heavy deck either. Alright, um, pass turn, he has a pretty good clock on me just from uh, colony plus angel, anything he plays I can counter, he actually has a spell. That I can even just mana leak. Oh no, he's just booting up a colonnade. Sure. Okay, he's taking the slow out. Seems fine. I need to. Are you kidding me? It's another swamp? Alright, well. For a low land deck, I drew really poorly. I'm just gonna I'm gonna scoop that one up. I actually think I have a pretty good game against them. I'm gonna put in consuming vapors. Um what do I go down? I don't wanna go down my threats. Let's go down to think twice. Mana leak doesn't seem great. Negate doesn't seem great either. Did he play any non creature spells? I guess he played like path. Didn't play a lot. 
You got up to a lot of mana quickly, too. And Spell Pierces didn't feel good. Maybe the mana leak is fine. It did keep him off things for a while. Now, what did he play with Negate? Put another peek in. Not that that's super good, but... Were there, were there negatable things that he played? Restoration Angel... Didn't seem like it seemed like he mostly played creatures. So I think I think spell pierces and negates are just both bad, so maybe I'll just run the mana leaks, even though mana leaks not that strong against him either. <sighs> um That seemed good. I mean go for the throat doesn't kill the golems, I guess, but it still seems pretty strong against him. I guess he didn't have any black that I saw, so I guess oh, not devour and flesh, but I guess Doomblade is just strictly better than go for the throat against him. Uh, removal does seem like it would be good. Maybe removal is just better, but it is just better. Oh, devour and flesh is something I didn't want. Um, yeah, removal is probably just better than counters for most of his stuff. Let's try it like that. Good game. Didn't let me type it. GG. I will go first. Well, I think this is a keeper, but it's not super good. But I, yeah, it can certainly be a lot worse too. Turn one thought scour actually feels pretty good with logic knot and murderous cut in hand, and then I also have a doom blade, doom blade something. This definitely seems like a winnable matchup. There's some more lands. Assuming Fabers could be good against him eventually. For right now, I, I just have to pass. I very well might logic not for one if he has a good play here. Doesn't look like it. Um, man, I wish I had better mana. Last turn. He's got all the lands. He just passes, sure. Land, how much is Angler? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could cast it if I have everything in my graveyard. Doesn't seem worth it. Pass turn. Really need that double black so I can play out my Desecration Demon in a little bit. It's not super important to do it now, but... No plays again? I don't think I can do anything here, so I guess I just pass. Welp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I could definitely play him if I wanted to, but again, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, unfortunately, I really need to this de get this desecration demon out, and that's just not happening. Plays. Sure. Oof, all islands. Jeez, I have a handful of black stuff. Well, oh yeah, I could play him and get rid of most of my graveyard, but I don't think it's a wise idea. Sure. 
guess there's no reason not to do this one. Resolving it doesn't seem super important. I'm not talking as much as I should be. I'm too engrossed in the game. Holy crap, do I have so much blue mana? It's ridiculous. It's gonna phantasmal image his wall. Sh sure, that seems fine. Not relevant. Serum Visions. I get to actually search my library a little bit. Is he gonna counter it? I mean, I could counter spell this counter spell, I guess. Is that actually worth it for me? One, two, three, four, one. Oof. Um, I guess that's fine. Getting invited to a League of Legends game? No, I'm not. Why did it flash? I don't know. Oh. That's fine. There's any reason to go lay on it. Okay, there you go. Sure. Be a, be a black land. Yes! So now the only question is do I play Desecration Demon or do I play Dermag Angler? Or do I play both? I think I'll just play Angler and hold up uh, removal. One, two, three, four. I don't know. One, two. any more delve cards right now. Do I delve for that one or do I mean I can delve for that one ever I guess and this is conditional and it would be the same price when I delve for it so I guess I'll just uh I guess I'll just didn't play that. Alright. You got it. So I'm not playing Consuming Vapors this turn anyway. I 
definitely doing better this game than last game in terms of feeling like I'm in control, but it's been a slow grindy game instead of a quick tempo-y game. Maybe, maybe, uh, Delver Secrets is a little out of place here. I think I'm going to have to cut this one a lot because I'm just not talking much and I'm playing kind of slow. Venser, sure. You can blink your uh, wall for uh, that sweet, sweet value. Seems pretty good. Another four mana. Sure, that's fine. Back down, you get to draw a card. Sure. Drown catacombs. One, two, three, four. And I think I'll just murderous cut if he tries to blink it again. single target kill spell. Oh, what does he have? He has a lot of planeswalkers in his deck, that's for sure. Six mana. Sun Titan, sure. He's gonna get back a land or maybe a colonnade. And it's gonna get back Phantasmal Image, sure. Um black, one, two, three. Here, I guess I'll get rid of Font Scour. I guess he could have. I don't have any other Delve cards in my hand. I should probably just leave up three mana for what it's worth. Like, there's no reason really not to do that. And then I have, if he mana leaks me, I have three up. I don't think he has mana leak, but probably not worth the risk. Sure, you get to Phantasmal Image, copy probably well, yeah, Wall of Omens, draw a card, seems good. Link your wall, sure. Happening, sounds good. Goes back in, draws a card. I'm gonna lead off Slate of Hand. I need, oh, Thought Scour or Delver of Secrets. Thought Scour gets me another draw, Delver gets me a Delver. Well, let's YOLO on the Thought Scour, I guess. Sleight of hand. I feel like he's a creature based deck. I feel like these are going to be good no matter what. Do I play one now or do I wait? I guess I go to combat. Okay. Does he sack one of his things? That's the question. He does. Okay, turn off auto yield. Second main, one, two, three, four. Some invaders here. Sack your wall. Waiting for him to decide past turn. Alright. There's Path. Well, Path is pretty good for him to have. That means he probably gets to ultimate uh, his guy. And I think that means he wins. Pro probably.
that's that, sure. Max in, no big deal. I'm back down to 20. Down, get nothing, that's fine. We had a Delver of Secrets. I think I basically lose here, but I haven't technically lost, so I'm gonna keep passing, I guess. Delver of Secrets, you wanna draw turn one or two. Um, not turn 13. Okay, seems good. Presumably he exiles Delver here. Four mana. Stone Horn, sure. Seems fine. Man, if I had drawn some of my counter spells early, I think I would have won this game. Alright. Uh, pass turn. Oop, Celestia Colonnade online, swing for five. He didn't blink anything. More land. All right. Well, the flood continues. I mean, I guess I am halfway through my deck. I have a little bit more than half my land, but it's partly because of the path. So, partly got to be expected. What did he do? Oh, he just tapped it to gain a life. Sure. This time you remember to use the colorless to boot it up. Sure, you got it. Last turn. I mean, I'm going to use this consuming vapors eventually, but it's not super relevant yet. I probably shouldn't be playing my lands though. That's I've, I think I've been mage playing them, but it would be really if I drew. A, um, if I drew a pack rat, I would regret having done that. Yeah, now I don't even really want to play the pack rack, so I would need to discard consuming vapors to it. So I guess I just pass turn. Yeah, net punished. Punished for my uh, being silly. Sure, that's fine. Five, so I need to play stuff next, starting next turn. Seems good. Okay. I draw another pack rat. Jeez. a counter or something? Oh, he, has, he runs Cryptic. Woof, I would not have expected this deck to run Cryptic. Sure. Seems fine. Well, I'll double pack rat.
should have been holding on to those lanes. I'd have two more pack rats right now, and then I would still lose, but it would be a little trickier. Alright, Ice Cube. He's got it. Good game, opponents. Uh, this is a very beatable deck. I just had bad draws, quite honestly, but he played it well. We lost. That's the way it goes. Good games. Yeah, if he hadn't ultimated the Venser, I think we probably could have won that match pretty easily. Oh well, it happens. Hey guys, Bobgar here. I just really wanted to quickly say, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content in general and would like to see more of it, subscribe. I'll be coming out with content, probably not as frequently as I would like, but uh, I will be coming out with more content in the future. And please leave me comments and let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, both in terms of production and in terms of my play and my deck building and all that. Uh, yeah, and I, again, as I always say, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time.